I'm Jerry Wyrock, a member of the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection in Marietta, Georgia. I'm here today representing the Suicide Prevention Ministry, an independent Lutheran organization, and also a 501c3 organization. In 1999, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America recognized the importance of and the problem represented by suicide when they issued a social message titled Suicide Prevention. In 1999, 30,000 people died annually by suicide. Today, that number is 45,000 people annually. In her video, Bishop Eaton makes the point that it is time to break the silence around suicide. The Suicide Prevention Ministry will be bringing to the congregations of the Southeastern Synod a suicide prevention program titled Breaking the Silence. The persistent silence that surrounds suicide exists largely because of the unwarranted stigma that people assign to it. Centuries ago, the church declared that suicide was an unforgivable sin. Yet, in her message, Bishop Eaton makes it clear that suicide is not an unpardonable sin. God's mercy and love extends to those who end their lives by suicide. There are some things we are not very good at talking about, some things that still carry a stigma and so remain hidden. Suicide is one of these things, maybe because it's frightening, unfathomable, maybe because we were taught that it is an unforgivable sin. There are over 42,000 deaths a year in the United States by suicide. A person between the ages of 15 and 24 dies of suicide about every two hours in America. There has been an increase in death by suicide among those serving in the military. And the toll on family, friends, and communities of those left behind is significant and long-lasting. Clearly, suicide is something we need to talk about. Suicide is a result of painful and persistent feelings of depression, despair, and hopelessness. Often it is the final desperate act of an individual who has come to see life as intolerable and seeks to end that pain. It is not an unforgivable sin. We are never beyond God's mercy and compassion. The psalmist wrote, Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become as night, even darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Suicide is a tragic consequence of a mental or behavioral disorder. Properly seen as a disease of the mind, a health condition, we know that suicide can be prevented through early identification of individuals at risk who receive prompt care and treatment. Open and honest conversation about mental illness and suicide that does not stigmatize people and awareness of spiritual and psychological resources that are available in congregations and communities will save lives. Life is precious and is a gift from God. We, as members of the body of Christ, can respond with compassion and action to those members of Christ's body who feel hopeless and alone. It is time for the church to break the silence. The Congregational Suicide Prevention Program, Breaking the Silence, is a no-cost, low-cost effort. It consists of three parts, preaching, asking, and learning. In the preaching part, we are asking our pastors to preach on suicide in the fall of the year. In the spring of the year, we are asking them to preach on one of the three co-occurring situations that occur with suicide. That is depression, alcoholism, 
and substance use disorder. Congregation members will be asked to request their primary care physicians to screen them for depression. Depression screening consists of asking two simple questions regarding the person's feeling in the two weeks previous. By asking these questions, we can determine if a person is depressed or not depressed. A no answer to each question reveals that the person is not depressed. A yes answer then leads to further questioning and probable treatment for depression. By asking our primary care doctors to screen for depression, we hope that the medical profession will make depression screening a routine daily part of the intake procedure and thereby increase the probability that we will be able to detect in advance any person who is thinking of suicide and take appropriate action to save that person. Congregation members will learn how to recognize a suicidal person and learn what to do to help that suicidal person in a 40-minute video titled Talk Saves Lives. This educational video has been prepared by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, AFSP, and it will be brought to congregations at no cost. Pastor Mark Larson of Redeemer Lutheran Church in Atlanta preached a powerful sermon on suicide on August 12th of this year. Pastor Larson will now share with you some of his thoughts on how to preach effective sermons about hope and help and suicide. I am not sure there is a more devastating experience for a congregation than to lose one of its members to suicide. Now, of course, such a loss is devastating for anyone, whether they be a loved one, a friend, a co-worker. But to lose a fellow disciple can rock a congregation to its core. It happened to a congregation that I once served. We were so surprised, confused, sad, and angry. It robbed us of our will to act. It shook our faith. But we decided to do something. We started talking. We began by taking a survey. How many of our people sitting in the pews on a Sunday morning have been touched by suicide or issues of mental illness? The results were astounding. Over 90% of our congregation personally suffered from some form of mental illness, were caring for a family member who was suffering, or had family friends that were carrying that burden. And way too many, especially among our youth, were mourning the loss of someone lost to suicide. I think the turning point came when I preached a sermon on suicide prevention and increasing support for mental health services in our community. Hearing these difficult issues talked about openly from the pulpit opened a dialogue that had for too long remained closed. All at once, people felt freed from the stigma too long attached to suicide and mental illness. If it could be talked about from the pulpit, then it could be talked about in our church, in our homes, workplaces, wherever someone might be hurting and alone. That congregation was moved to launch a support group for those suffering from mental illness and their caregivers. Some of us began to advocate with other congregations for better mental health services, such as critical incident training for law enforcement officers and pre-arrest diversion programs for nonviolent offenders. Within the first year of coming to the congregation that I now serve, I again preached a sermon on suicide prevention, the one attached to this video. Once more, the response was astounding. Again, people began to share their stories. Once more, the stigma was removed and the silence was ended. If I can make one suggestion, if you are a pastor or a faith leader considering addressing these issues, when you do so, make sure you have available a contact list of local resources that someone can easily access.
and be ready to be overwhelmed with ideas for launching programs of support and prevention. This is why I'm so proud of our Synod and our denomination for actively working on suicide prevention. And thanks to Presiding Bishop Eaton for leading the way. As she reminds us, we are never beyond God's mercy and compassion. And if I could add one more thing, simply talking can and does save lives.